Okay, so um, hi guys, my name is Nicole, and today I'll be talking to you guys about uh, teenagers and the pressure for them to attend college. Um, a little background about the issue um, in summary is uh, statistics released by the U.S. Department of Education for 2015 um, show that in the last 10 years, 18 to 24 year olds um, have increased graduation seniors by 5%. Um, this means that a total of 4.3 million students have been added to the application system to compete against each other since 1999. Um, according to data and results from um, Abbott's 2014 study, 78% um, of students who applied to college got accepted to a four-year college or university. This is out of a total of 88%. Um, for those of you who don't know what Abbott is, Abbott is pretty much a program that's for um, the average student 2.0 to 4.0 GPA. Um, I myself was in Abbott, that's why I I feel that um, there's always that person, that individual, um, counselor, teacher, parent, or someone who pushes you to go forth and um, go to college. That's why, for my main claim, um, it is that I chose teenagers today are more likely to attend college due to um, either external or internal pressures. <clears throat> my uh, three supporting claims state that, number one, teens care about their families and future. And um, number two, teenagers are also worried about job stability and attain a job in the future. And number three, um, when teenagers are pushed to listen to um, teachers and parents because they are still underage and in high school. For my um, first supporting point, I'm going back. Um, teenagers care about their families in the future. An example of this is that um, there has been a current increase in Hispanic teenagers entering college according to uh, the National Center for Education Statistics for Hispanics. Um, there has been a total of 12% increase in college enrollment. Um, facts as well um, have had an increase in college enrollment. Um, the National Center for Education states that um, black increase in college enrollment for 3% from years um, 2000 all the way to 2013. And um, this shows that um, teenagers are being more uh, pushed into going to college just because they are first generation. They see that their parents haven't gone to college, um, that their siblings haven't gone to college. Uh, personally, that's um, where I come from. Um, and for my um, second supporting point, um, I wrote that teenagers are also worried about um, job stability and obtaining the job after their education. And um, this puts teenagers in a very tough position because um, I guess in the workforce they ask for job experience, um, but then again, you can't. Some students can't balance work and balance school at the same time. It's pretty difficult for them. Um, and according to um, Charles Hitchensman, sociology professor at the University of Washington, who has studied and written about um, student employment, and um, we are currently in a job crisis due to the recession. And teenagers are competing against older workers who are already trained and have job experience. So uh, people in the workforce will rather hire them than hire the students right after graduation. And then um, other statistics that I came across was um, since uh, 1970, um, job training is now less. Before you speak, two and a half weeks before starting um, a job that you would be trained, and that is in a total of a year. Uh, today, um, nowadays, according to the Washington Post statistics, um, the um, average teenager is given a total of 11 hours of training for the whole year. And then I'm um, going to my third supporting point. Um, teenagers are pushed to listen to teachers and parents while still in high school. Um, in some high schools over the country, um, there's a concept of mandatory volunteerism. According to um, Stuart Ng, publisher of the New York Times, um, counselors and teachers push students into doing mandatory volunteer hours for their high school. And um, some high schools give uh, about approximately 40 hours. And after it, some teenagers, they do like the whole concept of volunteering. Others don't. And um, we see that um, for those teenagers who don't like to volunteer, that um, colleges do ask for um, a prerequisite of more than 40 hours. Um, and that's why we see that um, teenagers now are more pressured and um, often to going to volunteering, working because of job applications, they ask a lot of you. Um, as you guys know, I'm sure that um, you all had either that um, support system or that program like I myself did um, to help you get to where you are today. And that is in some cases, not all cases I'm saying. And um, that's why I feel that um, today teenagers are 
more pressure and going off into college. Thank you. All right, well, the, you have a proposition that's clearly identified. The phrasing sounded a little bit awkward. Uh, the contents are previewed pretty clearly at the beginning. It's organized in the body of the speech, so you follow the signpost that you set up for us. So structurally, I think most things are sound. The biggest question I have is, what's in dispute here? This simply sounds like a description of the world that we live in. I'm not exactly sure what's controversial on that. If there's a harm from pressuring teens into going to college, that would be perhaps something that's controversial. Uh, that there are social pressures for people to go to college because they need to, in order to get a job, to be competitive, or because others expect them to do that, I think you're simply describing something that everybody knows. Now, if the argument is that there's more than there once was, and that there's some consequence to there being more than there once was, that needs to be clearer. That doesn't sound like the argument that you've got. Uh, I, I think that that's a little bit problematic. I like the statistics that you have t on the first point, talking about 12% increase in Latino enrollment and uh, I think it was 4% increase in black enrollment, and you make that sound like there's something wrong with that, like that's a bad thing. I would imagine that people in all, either of those communities would see that as uh, an improvement over what they had before and better than the alternative of not continuing the education. If there's a harm to continuing education, um, it's not been presented here, and it's not apparent what it is that your reservation about that is. Um, the, uh, the job issue, I think, is one of those things that's a truism. Uh, people want to hire people who are better prepared. Now, your argument that suggests that students are less well-trained for a job before they take the job than they once were, that might be true, I think, if, if we're talking about uh, what kind of training the uh, the companies provide or something like that? Do they expect uh, their new employees to be better prepared and ready for the job market without a, a lot of additional training? That might be true and again I'm, I'm wondering and why is that controversial? Is there some consequence to this? It's just it's like saying oh you know if you want to get a job you have to be prepared and there's a lot of pressure to get prepared. Yeah? Why, why is this a, a controversy? I don't, I don't really understand it. On the third point, I think you have an interesting argument here that might be able to be developed into a more um, controversial a aspect, and that is this mandatory volunteerism, uh, that there is some problem with that, that students are being hustled into providing free services against their will. I can see that that would be something that's problematic. Um, and then you know argue that it's kind of some sort of indentured servitude or uh, you know uh, that they, that they that the private sector or the schools are using this as a way to get free labor um, then I could see okay that might, there's there's maybe a little bit of controversy there but mostly it's just an argument that says it's another way to get into college and you know we're back to the same position a lot of people think that going to college is a good idea if you have the argument that says college is not necessary, that other job options are very viable, that there's, there's really less need for students to go to college than they believe there is, that I think would be a clearer argument. As it is, I'm just not sure, like I said before, what, what's in dispute about most of what you're saying. I think you're simply describing things that everybody in here is going to go, that's, that's true. So why, why are you presenting this? What inference do you want us to make? So that's the problem that I see with your presentation. All right, thank you.